Hi everyone. I've been wanting to do this topic for a long time and I just kept putting it off. Um, I want to do it justice, not that I'm necessarily going to, but uh, anyway, it seems to be time to do it, so let's have a go. Um, so it's, the topic is Christ's image impressed on us. Um, so in Hebrews 1, 1 to 3, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, who, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So um, in verse 3 we've got um, express image, which is G5481. Um, a word called um, character. And um, this is like a, an engraving tool. Um, so it's uh, the figure stamped, for, um, for example, an ex exact copy or representation. Um, and biblical usage is the instrument used for engraving or carving um, or the mark stamped upon um, that instrument or wrought out on it. A mark or a figure burned in or stamped on an impression, the exact expression of any person or thing, marked likeness, precise reproduction in every respect, like a facsimile. So um, God is expressed through Christ. So all of God's nature, God's character, God's person is expressed through Christ. And We'll find um, in further on in, in other verses that um, we are also exp uh, in the same way um, becoming the express image of Christ. So um, God's image is in Christ and Christ's image is in us. Um, so down the line we actually have the image of God. Um, being brought into us. Sorry if you hear any noises in the background. It's my kitten going stupid. <laughs> um, so and in Colossians 1, 12-15 uh, Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So again, that's um, showing that Christ is the image of God, the Im image of the invisible God. Um, and then there's... Um, the idea of us being sealed by the Holy Spirit, um, and that's that's um, in a way the the Holy S or God impressing His image into us um, through a sealing of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, with with seals um, in the in ancient times, they would you know have wax um, melted onto. Um, a scroll or a letter or something and um, and have the Im image of a ring or something belonging to a person um, impressed into the wax um, and there's many other uses for seals as well so it's his image is impressed into us um, in that sense as well of course it's that's the initial sealing um, but it doesn't end there, but we certainly have an element of um, God's image, Christ's image being pressed into us at our, the moment of our salvation, our salvation when 
we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. So Second Corinthians one. Um, now he which is, which established us us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And again Ephesians one, eleven to fourteen in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Um, and in Second Corinthians 4 we have um, Christ being the image of God again, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, <coughs> who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And um, here we're starting to talk about the light, um, which isn't sort of another way of it's just saying God's glory or, um, or Jesus' glory. Um, he is the light of the world and he shines in our hearts. Um, and um, verse 6, For God who commanded the light to shine out of, the, out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ and his face shines with the glory of God. And it shines in our hearts and um, that's his glory shining in our hearts. And that glory, um, you know, through the Holy Spirit is is what is impressing his image into us and we'll get to that a little bit further on um, so still talking about the light we've got John's references to it which is John 1 1 to 9 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Uh, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So um, we've got the light which is Christ, his glory and um, and the life was the light. So um, the life of Christ is, or shall we say, the light, the life of Christ is light or the light of <laughs> Oh, sorry, it's too late. I can't, I can't get my mouth around that one. <laughs> I'm tired. Hey, stop eating that. Oh, sorry, kitten chewing on material you shouldn't be chewing on. Yuck. Um, okay, First John 2, 8 to 10. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he, he is in the light and hateth his brother is in the darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. So anyone who believes the gospel by default um, loves his brother. That's true of him because he believes the gospel for the brother that believes the gospel. Um, and because we believe the gospel, we are saved and we abide in the light. We abide in Christ. He is the light and his light shines in our hearts. 
He is the true light. Um, and then we, when we've got the topic um, coming to um, how um, the New Testament ministry, it's a writing on our hearts um, through the Spirit and it, it's writing um, basically Christ into our hearts, the, the glory um, is writing on our hearts and his image, Christ's image, is being impressed into us. So 2 Corinthians 3, do we, begin, do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, others epistles of condemnation, sorry, <laughs> commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. So we've got um, the yeah, epistles of Christ written on our hearts with the Holy Spirit, which is the ink um, written onto our hearts so that we have um, Christ being in, impressed onto us just as um, in he Hebrews 1 where we had um, uh, Christ being the express image no God being the express image <laughs> no, I'm tired sorry I'm really tired um, the express image of God um, as Christ, God represented um, the image of his person being in Christ, um, being represented by Christ. And then, and then further on we have the same thing for the believers. We have um, the image of Christ expressed in us. Um, moving on, uh, verse 4 and such trust we have through Christ to God would. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? So we have the glorious, um, the, the, the glory that it never fades, is eternal. It's being written into us. We can't see it now but it will be manifested um, at the rapture. Um, you know, the sons of God will be manifested um, at that time. But we see it by faith right now. And then verse 18, But we all with open face as, as in a glass the glory of the Lord. Sorry, did I read that properly? Um, with open face beholding as in a glory as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord so the spirit is changing us into the image of Christ from glory to glory and so that's a work in progress as I was saying, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit the moment we are saved, and that is an, an impression of Christ into us. But um, he continues to develop that image. Um, I, I, I just, what just came to mind was the, uh, you know, when you're developing an image in a photograph in, in a dark room. Um, I don't know if you've done that or you've seen it probably seen it in a movie or something um, you take the um, once you've sort of 
put the image on the paper, however that's done, through a, a light process, um, then you put that in water, in a, in a solution, and, and you see the image um, go from basically white paper to fading. It it's happens quite quickly, but it, it quickly sort of fades up until you get the clear picture. So, um, yeah, it's like that, except slower. <laughs> It's, it's, it is it's quite a quick process when you're actually developing a photo, but um, yeah, the picture f fades into existence. Um, unlike the fading glory of the ministration of condemnation, the law, um, God's the ministry of the New Testament, the New Testament ministry, the ministry of grace, um, that is eternal and it never fades so if anything it's it's becoming clearer and clearer uh, brighter and brighter rather than um, the opposite fading away um, and Romans 8 29 to 30 for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Um, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and who he justified, them he also glorified. So again, we're being conformed to the image of Christ. Um, he is the firstborn of many brethren, and we are, um, you know, sons of God in the same as as He is, because we are in Christ, and we're being conformed to His image. Um, and we will be glorified. We are being glorified, but it's it'll become apparent to the physical eyes at the rapture. And 1 Corinthians 15, 45-49 And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and is the, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And of course, the heavenly image is Christ. So again, here we've got us bearing the image of Christ, or which is ultimately the image of God. And Colossians 3.10, so this is about the new man, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So how do we get the image of Christ? Um, by being renewed in knowledge. So we renew our mind, we're putting on the new man, walking in the spirit, being renewed daily in the knowledge of Christ. And as we do that, um, his spirit uh, writes into our hearts, uh, engraves his image on our hearts, um, and we're changed from glory to glory into his image. And as I was saying before, it's, it is a work in progress. Um, as with the picture, the photograph developing, it, there is that initial ceiling, but then it gets clearer and clearer and brighter and brighter until you have the full image, which is what we will see um, at the rapture and beyond. Um, so Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which, hath, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And that word workmanship, um, G4161, 
poema um, is, I mean, other translations um, use like the word masterpiece, I think, is one of them. Um, and Strong says it's a product, um, a thing that is made, workmanship. Um, and um, I, I looked it up and um, our word poem um, does literally come from this word. Um, so uh, poema, uh, th I think there was another intermediate word, but it does, the etymology goes back to this word. So um, a poem does come from this idea of a workmanship, a thing that is made. Because, um, you know, like in music, classical music, um, a lot of pieces of music are refer referred to as a work. Um, so that's the same kind of concept. A poem can be a work. It's a work of art, a work of literary, a literary work. You've got a musical work, something that is, is made and they're, you know, something that's a lot of creative um, energy has gone into and that's God is creative. He's, he's the creator and when he made the new man, that was a new creation that he made on the cross. And um, so we are his creation with not only the original um, Adamic creation, but the you know, the old creation, but we are also now the new creation in Christ. And he is working on us. Um, and it's like a poem. He's writing in our hearts. So, um, yeah, I, I'm going to stop talking because I'm tired. I hope that blesses you. Talk to you later. Bye.